Welcome back to the final part of the show, and here we want to cover the news, although some of it isn't new news, because we've ended up talking over the past few weeks rather a lot about the new models that we saw at EICMA. So to start, here's a bit of that old news that I think is still worth mentioning, because it is, after all, the setting of a new land speed record, and it involves MotoGP and world superbike legend Max Biaggi. You may remember that we first mentioned him on the programme for breaking a land speed record back in November of 2020, when he set a speed of 408 kilometres an hour on an electric bike, the Voxen Wattman that was built by the French Venturi manufacturer. Well, not ones to rest on their laurels, the same combination of rider and machine set a new two-way average speed record of 455.7 kilometres an hour, with an outright speed of 470.2 kilometres an hour, which is only eight miles an hour short of the magic 300 mile an hour mark. The records were set towards the end of November at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on the 4.6 kilometer long runway that was designed as a landing spot for the space shuttle. They picked up about 20 or so records, some for partially streamlined, some for naked, others for different weight classes, and so now the bar has been raised even higher for anyone wishing to get themselves an electric bike record. In amongst all those new big numbers is one for a naked bike that is a record for a bike that's got either an electric or an internal combustion engine, and that's set at 370 kilometers an hour, which is pretty tasty when you haven't got a fairing. Let's have a quick look at one of those manufacturers that wasn't, somewhat surprisingly, at EICMA. Our Orange Brethren from Austria have been very busy with new models these past few years, and it looks very much like KTM will continue with that rate of development into 2022. The stuff we know about but haven't really mentioned on the show as yet includes an updated 1290 Super Duke GT that now features the lighter weight wheels from the Super Duke R, and they wear some new Continental Sport Touring rubber. And there's a new 7-inch TFT screen to bring it in line with the other big capacity models in the range. There's also a new Super Duke R Evo for 2022 that has the same engine and chassis, but features WP Apex semi-active suspension, although the standard R will remain on sale alongside it. Later in the year, we expect to see some sort of announcement about a 990 Duke R. Spy shots that we unfortunately can't show because of copyright, seem to strongly suggest the middleweight naked bike will become a 990, pushing the boundaries of the term middleweight once again. If the naked bike goes that way, then maybe we'll also see a GT version, and we'd assume that the adventure models will follow suit soon after. It hasn't taken them too long to get from 790 to 990, has it? And now allow me to end this week's episode with another Chinese bike that has been inspired by another manufacturer's design. It might make you laugh or cry or, or maybe even a bit of both, but I know it makes me despair for the morals and business ethics of the great state of China. Take a quick look. Do you recognize this? Yes, of course. It's a panigale, is it not? Just left out in the sun, so the sharp lines become a bit blobby and the Ducati Red changes its hue to something cheaper and nastier. Or what about this? If you fancy a V4 Street Fighter and you've had 15 pints in an afternoon drinking session and can only see barely through the one eye, you might think this is a genuine bargain. Until you wake up the next morning with a blazing hangover to discover that you have bought a sad imitation of the real thing with some dreadful little engine, horrible suspension, and brakes that wouldn't even stop a mountain bike. Unfortunately, the lure of big money means that this sort of thing is gonna keep on happening. Ducati could conceivably file some kind of lawsuit, which they know in the free and fairly useless courts of China will never succeed, so they'd rather ignore this affront to their dignity and concentrate on selling more of the real thing to a market which they have as yet barely begun to tap. Oh well. Long may the People's Republic of Ripoffs continue to illuminate their true selves and provide us with such amusing little stories. And on that note of pure frustration, that's it for this episode. We'll see you again next week.